Let's talk about the adrenal tumor. Most of the time these adrenal tumors are going to present as incidental omas or tumors that uh, are asymptomatic and they show up on some other kind some other type of imaging for another problem. The symptomatic ones are about 30% of them and uh, they they represent uh, symptoms according to the layer that they originate in. So my arrows are completely off here for some reason. Uh, Kahn syndrome uh, is going to be a, a aldosteronoma, so a, a tumor of the zona glomerulosa where you're going to be producing um, a lot of aldosterone. And uh, of course, if you're producing a lot of aldosterone, you're going to be with uh, retaining your sodium and uh, causing hypertension. Cushing syndrome is going to result if you have a adenoma of the zona fasciculata where we're making our cortisol. So uh, classic signs of Cushing syndrome we've talked about before are uh, moon face. Um, you uh, generally will have um, sorry thinning of the skin um, and uh, stretch marks on the skin. You can get uh, some of these um, that originate in the zona reticularis that are a sex hormone producing tumor. These are pretty rare, um, and uh, you know the the symptoms that you uh, see from those are, are probably self-explanatory. You know, if you uh, get uh, changes in sexual function, um, women will get masculinization, and if you have a tumor of the adrenal medulla, then uh, that will result in a pheochromocytoma. You're going to produce uh, excess catecholamines, which leads to anxiety, uh, again hypertension, uh, palpitations, uh, tachycardia. So on your differential diagnosis, adenoma is the most common, uh, which is a, a benign tumor, but it, but it can cause these symptoms that we've talked about depending on where they originate. Neuroblastoma you see in children, uh, pheochromocytoma we mentioned, myelo, myelolipoma, gangliononeuromas, uh, adrenal cysts, uh, hemorrhage and abscess. You're, you're going to more likely see the hemorrhage and abscess if uh, there has been a previous surgery uh, where we got maybe some infection in there or uh, Maybe you can have a trauma as well. Uh, adrenal cortical carcinomas uh, are the, the ones we worry about uh, being uh, malignant. And you can get metastasis to the adrenal glands from other areas. So uh, Cushing syndrome, if you, if you do have a tumor of the zona fasciculata, uh, then you, you'll you'll probably see a, an obese patient or a, a, a you know thicker around the middle patient come in. It will most likely have some hypertension because um, cortisol can act uh, as a mineralocorticoid as well as a glucocorticoid. Result in diabetes, of course, because uh, cortisol is kind of the anti-insulin. It, it acts uh, in opposition to, to insulin, which uh, causes you to, your liver to produce more glucose, and it also causes the tissues to uh, not take up as much glucose. Um, Cushing syndrome also can lead to, to hirsutism, um, easy bru bruising, and weakness. If you have an aldosteronoma, again, of the zona glomerulosa, then uh, you're going to keep your sodium. Uh, aldosterone uh, works specifically on the distal collecting, uh, distal prox sorry, the uh, distal convoluted tubule and the collecting ducts. And um, you, you're also going to be uh, getting rid of your... Um, potassium uh, as you um, as you retain the, the sodium so you can get hypo not hyper this is an error on my slide here uh, it should be hypokalemia and uh, and you get headaches um, as well so when you're taking the history you start out by asking some open-ended questions 
uh, have them tell the story, and then you move on to the more focused questions that will help you lead to a diagnosis. Uh, if you ask them about uh, medical program problems, especially uh, high blood pressure and, and diabetes, osteoporosis can help us narrow down what kind of a, a problem it is. So high blood pressure, of course, with aldosteronoma, diabetes uh, generally associated with Cushing's because of the, uh, again, the anti-insulin effects of cortisol. Osteoporosis is also an effect of hypercortisolism as well as bruising, stretch marks. Headaches, again, uh, can be associated with aldosteronoma and um, see them with pheochromocytoma. Uh, weakness, with uh, uh, often seen with uh, Cushing's or hypercortisolism. A low potassium, as we talked about, uh, where I made the mistake on the other slide, uh, is going to be associated with um, the uh, retention of sodium and the excretion of potassium seen with aldosterone, uh, aldosteronomas. Sweating, palpitation, and anxiety see that with an uh, increase in catecholamines associated with a medullary tumor um, or a pheochromocytoma. I mean, um, if you have changes in sexual characteristics, changes in uh, sexual performance, um, then uh, those those things can be associated with a uh, tumor of the zona reticularis um, as well as hair di distribution can be associated with uh, a sex hormone producing tumor as well as the uh, cortisol producing tumor. So then you, you want to do a full physical exam with any of these people. Uh, check their blood pressure uh, which which will help you to, to identify uh, both hypercortisol and hyperaldosteronism. Uh, see, look for signs of anxiety, like sweating, or just a, a general anxious appearance. Moon face, masculinization with uh, sex hormone producing. Thin skin, uh, again, will lead you to uh, think about cortisolism. You'll, you'll see uh, spider veins, telangiectasias. You want to do a good fundoscopy exam with uh, with these uh, patients with hyperaldosteronism. The you can get hypertensive retinopathy, so you want to check for that. Check the spine for any scoliosis, which might lead you to uh, think about osteoporosis with uh, hypercortisolism. Uh, skin stretch marks again with hypercortisolism. So. Uh, the, the lab studies that are, are most likely to be done with this, you'll want to see the aldosterone renin ratio. If you have a, a lot of aldosterone and, and not a lot of renin, then, uh, then you're making aldosterone without the renin telling you to make aldosterone. So, so that can be a, a big sign of uh, aldosteronoma. Check the serum potassium like we talked about. CRH would you uh, expect that to be low or high? Well, if the uh, tumor is creating cortisol, cortisol has a negative feedback on the hypothalamus, so you're going to decrease production of CRH and decrease production of ACTH. Uh, if you do have a, a high uh, ACTH associated with hypokalemic alkalosis, then you're most likely producing ACTH somewhere else. The most common of these is going to be a small cell cancer of the lung, small cell carcinoma. So you also check cortisol levels and do a dexamethasone suppression test. If, if you uh, give dexamethasone and it suppresses the uh, production of cortisol, then it is uh, uh, probably not going to be ectopic ACD, ACTH production because uh, those are, are generally not responsive to dexamethasone respect, uh, suppression. Low dose uh, dexamethasone will suppress a pituitary adenoma that's producing ACTH, uh, but uh, sorry, high dose will, but but low dose will not. So, so a high dose, uh, 
uh, it'll it'll take a a high dose to suppress it with with a pituitary adenoma, but uh, ectopic can't even be, be suppressed with a high dose. So the metanephrines, those are breakdown products of catecholamines, and so if you have those in your urine, uh, you probably got the uh, pheochromocytoma, vanilla mendelic acid is uh, again another breakdown product, and uh, you check for sex hormones. With CT, go ahead and bypass the X-ray and ultrasound. They won't tell you enough. Uh, so go to go to the CT, which you might have found it uh, that way in the first place. Um, there's also MRI and an MIBG scan, uh, and uh, sorry, that should be an, an MBIG scan and venography. So on the CT. The uh, Hounsfield units are a measure of the density, and density or a, a, a hyperdense tumor is going to be associated with malignancy. There is a uh, washout phenomenon that you see with uh, a less dense tumor, and uh, basically that just means that um, after uh, giving contrast, uh, when you wait a little while, then the, the uh, density goes back down to normal on uh, a less dense and, and therefore a most likely benign tumor. CTs do, however, underestimate the size. MRIs, of course, you don't have the radiation associated with the CT, which is a great thing. It's also sensitive, but it's it's expensive. So that's the that's the common comparison between CT and, and MRI. MRI is re really good and, and uh, less invasive, but uh, it's very expensive. So the MBIG, the meta iodo benzyl guanidine test, is uh, is going to be a nuclear test that that helps you to identify adrenal tissue, so you can you can see uh, pheochromocytoma. You can also just uh, pull blood out of the adrenal veins and compare the levels of hormones from the left side to the right side. So if you've got uh, a high uh, amount of aldosterone or cortisol or any other uh, hormone produced by the adrenal glands on, on one side versus the other, then that's a good indication of where your problem is. So do you treat it, do you cut it out, or do you not cut it out? Uh, generally, you're probably going to uh, cut it out if it's got any symptoms that are bothering the patient. Theochromocytoma, you will probably cut out either way, just because it, it generally will end up causing them a problem, so you might as well cut it out when you find it. Of course, if it's malignant, you want to get rid of it. Uh, we talked a little bit about some of the ways that uh, you identify a malignancy, but, but the major one that you look for is just the size. If it's going to be above 6 centimeters, then you take it out. If it's between 4 to 6, then you, you kind of weigh your options, your risks versus your benefits. Under 4, you, you're okay for a while. Uh, of course, older people have increased risk with surgery, so you want to take that into consideration. If you if you do have uh, risks that it, that make you want to not do a surgery, you can treat some of these symptoms medically. For example, uh, pheochromocytoma. You can you can alleviate some of the symptoms with a beta blocker like a tenolol. Uh, you can also give uh, phenoxybenzamine. Um, and if you have uh, aldosteronoma, you can treat that with spironolactone, which you are, uh, often do uh, preoperatively anyway. If you if you are going to do a surgery, you uh, move the colon out of the way, uh, and you dissect out the gland, of course. And uh, that you're going to want to identify the, the pancreatic groove as well as the uh, make sure you identify the wall of the stomach. You, you clamp the uh, adrenal vein 
which on the right side is going to come right out of the IVC and it's generally really short so it's it's kind of a, a little bit more uh, difficult to to isolate and, and clamp the left uh, adrenal vein comes out of the left renal and it's a little bit longer and easier to find the adrenal arteries you don't need to to clamp them off or anything you can just use the uh, electric cautery or the harmonic dissecting tool to uh, cauterize those arteries and you shouldn't have any bleeding oh, of course with the with the adrenal arteries you have one coming out of the inferior phrenic artery one from the aorta and one from the renal and that's the same on both sides so after you uh, after you excise the tumor you send it off to a pathology and the major thing that they're going to be looking at is whether or not it's an adenoma or adrenal cortical carcinoma which would make you worry about uh, metastasis or invasion so and and that's really the way that you kind of tell the difference is if uh, if it is invasive and not encapsulated it's uh, it's more likely to be adrenal cortical carcinoma. It, you could talk for a half hour about the pathology, but I wouldn't understand it. And uh, these are the major points. So after the surgery, so some things that can arise from this. Uh, of course, infection is always a, a risk of surgery. But you, specifically with adrenal surgery, you can get some of these these problems like Addisonian crisis. So uh, Addison's disease is the um, is the lack of production of cortisol um, or la lack of uh, adrenal function, and the reason you can get this is because if you have a tumor that is producing a lot of cortisol, it's going to be suppressing the CRH ACTH uh, production in the hypothalamus and. Uh, anterior pituitary. So if if those are suppressed, uh, then we are not making ACTH, and the other, the contralateral adrenal gland is going to be atrophied because it's not being stimulated. So uh, a lot of times this will take some time for, to resolve for, for the for the contralateral adrenal gland to kind of uh, grow back and and start working enough to to make the right, right amount of hormones also with an aldosteronoma of course they're going to be hypertensive before the surgery and all of a sudden afterwards you're not going to have as much aldosterone and so you're going to need to adjust the hypertensive medication so you don't uh, make them go hypertensive uh, men syndrome is uh, associated with pheochromocytoma so if you do have pheochromocytoma and you take it out you want to monitor uh, thyroid and uh, and other uh, men's syndrome associated tumors if you if you did have a malignant uh, tumor that you took out you want to really be vigilant in looking for metastasis and uh, also recurrence of the tumor Nelson's disease is uh, is cool because it's named after a guy from Utah, and Utah is awesome. But Nelson was a a guy who figured out that after you remove the adrenal glands, then you uh, can get a, a pituitary tumor from. Uh, the sudden lack of uh, negative feedback on the hypothalamus so you, so you get a lot more CRH production and that can lead to hypopituitarism and uh, and other problems and uh, we mentioned infection was common with all surgeries <laughs>